Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation. And this is video 27.1 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This video discusses how to approach stent loss. Equipment loss or entrapment is one of the three major com coronary complications, the other two being acute vessel closure and perforation. Equipment loss and entrapment can actually lead to either acute vessel closure or perforation. Early in my training, I did have uh, a few cases of stent loss. One was performed uh, through a five French guide catheter, and I have since been very hesitant to do PCI through small guide catheters. The second one was in a patient who eventually required coronary bypass craft surgery. And those experiences made me want to learn more, so I reviewed the Mayo experience at the time, which taught me many useful lessons that came in very handy in the years since then. And I will try to share some of those lessons in this video. First of all, on the causes and prevention of stent loss, probably the most common cause is poor vessel preparation. Direct stenting should be done very rarely, if ever, mainly in uh, saphenous vein graft lesions when there is extrathistal embolization, or when we have done imaging and we know that the lesion is pliable and there is low risk of distal embolization. But especially in cases with heavily tortuous and calcified lesions, this is the excellent protoplasm for losing stents. Sometimes the stent may actually catch through another stent. Other potential causes is use of small, such as five French sky catheters. The reason there being that when we're trying to pull the stent back, into the guide catheter, a 5 friends has a much smaller lumen than a 6 or 7 or 8 friends guide, and therefore a potentially deformed stent may be e easier to catch the tip of the guide and become stripped off the balloon. Also, sometimes trying to forcefully pull the stent back can lead to stent loss. Sometimes using guide extensions can actually lead to stent loss, in part due to the same mechanism as using small guide catheters. And finally, doing retrograde stent delivery can lead to stent loss, but we don't do this anymore during CTO PCI. And these are again examples of how we can have stent loss. The most common one is the stent becomes deformed, trying to pull it back into the guide. The balloon comes back, but the stent becomes stripped off the balloon. Sometimes, however, the stent can be stuck in a lesion, and then it can stay there, or um, the balloon may go forward and the stent may not be able to follow. And this is an image of how a deformed stent looks like. This is another image. This stent deformation can happen during attempts to deliver through poorly prepared lesions or if the stent catches the guide catheter. And if there continues to be forceful pulling back of the stent, then the stent can become stripped off, stripped off the balloon. This is an example of attempting to deliver a stent through a septal collateral, le leading to stent loss. Again, we don't do this anymore in CTO PCI. Sometimes trying to advance the stent through the proximal collar of a guide extension can lead to stent loss. This is from the earlier versions of the guideliner. The current versions are much easier, much smoother transition, and this is much less likely to occur. However, one is to be careful to not wrap around the wire with the push rod, because that might, again, uh, make difficult for stents to go through and lead to stent loss. How to prevent stent loss? Essentially, it is the same as the potential causes, addressing the potential causes, avoiding direct stenting in more cases, especially in heavily calcified vessels, doing a great job in preparing the vessel, often using intravascular imaging, confirming that the vessel is ready for stent delivery, trying to stand from distal to proximal so you don't have to recross the stand. Guide extensions can cause stand loss but also can prevent stand loss by facilitating delivery through challenging anatomy. If uh, there is difficulty in delivering or pulling back the stand, don't use a lot of force. This is the same as access. A lot of force is what can lead to a stand that could be retrieved with further gentle manipulations to actually come off the balloon. If a guide extension is used, the push rod should be placed under a towel. If you're trying to pull the stand back in the guide but there's resistance, don't pull hard. Instead, just advance the stand again, make the guide more coaxial, and then trying to pull back again. Using bigger guide catheters helps minimize the risk of stand loss and also facilitate delivery. And then, if a stand could not be delivered and came out, 
then before putting it back in the body, you should always look at it because if the stent has become deformed, then it should be discarded and a new stent used. Otherwise, there is significant risk of losing the stent during delivery attempts. What to do if, despite all the measures, there is stent loss? The key algorithm has to do with uh, retrieval uh, versus not retrieval. And although for most equipment we do want to retrieve them for the body, for stents, actually quite often retrieval might not be the preferred option, but actually leaving it in place, either deploying it if we have wire access through the stand or crushing it if we have lost wire access to the stand, may actually be the preferred approach, can be faster and safer. As David Holmes said, attempts at removal can make things worse. And if you decide to retrieve it, you need imagination, creativity, flexibility, and excellent visualization because the stands can be very thin, can be difficult to visualize, especially in calcified vessels. This is an algorithm about how to approach, to approach the stand loss. The first question is, where is the stand lost? If it's in the periphery, then, especially if it's in a small, inconsequential branch, for example, a branch of the femoral iliac artery, it may be best to leave it in place. This does not cause any adverse problems. If it's lost in the coronary, as we discussed before, the question is, do we need to retrieve it or not? Because if we don't, if it's in an inconsequential location in the coronary artery, it may be best to either deploy it or crush it. But if we need to retrieve it, then if we have wire position through the stand, the most common technique and the easiest to use is the so-called small balloon technique we'll discuss in a second. Alternatively, snares can be used. Alternatively, multiple guide wires can be twirled to intermingle their distal tips and pull everything back. And then if everything else fails, then sometimes emergency surgery might be required. This is an example of a stent crushing. This was the stent that became dislodged from the balloon. A second wire was advanced. A balloon was advanced next to the stand, inflated and crushed the stand against the wall of the vessel. Another stand is advanced and then the new stand is essentially covering the previously placed stand. Now, alternatively, and probably simpler than this, if we have wire access, it would have been to just put a balloon in the dislodged stand and just deploy the stand against the, the wall of the artery. This is an example of the patient. There was disease in the circumflex as well as disease in the left main. The plan was to stand first the mid-circumflex and then finish with standing the left main, previous coronary bypass graft patient. However, crossing was very challenging. Probably we didn't do the best job in preparing the lesion. And then, trying to pull the stand back, the stand came off the balloon. The balloon came out, but the stand did not. And it's hard to visualize, but the stand essentially is partially in the left main. And moreover, we did have a dissection distally with TIMI zero flow and um, ST segment elevation. So what to do next? As we discussed before, sometimes the simplest thing is to just deploy the stand. That's what we did. We put a balloon through the lost stand. The stand was deployed. We had lost uh, another stand, and this is how the stand came out. Again, you can see the stand struts that have been deformed. After doing that, then we were able to balloon and then do a better job repairing the lesion. We had still some stand loss requiring repeat uh, deployment of the stand. And eventually, this was before actually the guide extension era, but what we did is use a proxies, which is the same as a guide extension, all the way down to the lesion, deliver the stand through the guide extension. And then by doing that, we're able to get a nice final result. So the lessons from this are that if a stand is lost, the simplest way to deal with this is to deploy it. Here, it was a protected left main, so no big deal. Now, in other cases, if you have an unprotected left main, it might be a little more difficult uh, uh, decision. But if, for example, the stand is lost in the proximal circumflex, then uh, all that you may need is just deploy it in this location and then continue with your PCI. Assuming you want to take the stand out, the simplest technique, if you have wire access through the stand, is to use the small balloon technique. Small balloon, 1.2, 1.5 millimeters, is advanced through the lost stand. Now, sometimes it can go through, sometimes it may not, depending on if the stand has been uh, deformed or not. But if we can get the balloon through, then the balloon is inflated, and then the balloon is pulled back, bringing together with it the lost stand 
to the kite caster. Sometimes actually it is hard to bring the balloon all the way in and one just can remove everything including the balloon and the stand and the wire from the body. These are some examples. This is a patient who has uh, an LAD CTO. And then uh, trying to deliver a stent, it was challenging. Then the balloon came back, but the stent had difficulty entering into the guide catheter. And the balloon came back, but the stent did not. So in this case, we have the stent from the left main to the lady. This is not the best location, so we want to retrieve it. We were able to advance a balloon through the stand, the balloon was inflated distally, and then the balloon was pulled back slowly all the way into the guide catheter, and then the balloon together with the lost stand came out. This is how it looks like, this is the inflated balloon, this is the deformed stand that was successfully retrieved. This is another case, a patient with multiple right coronary artery lesions, a significant IFR, the lesion was prepared, but then we had difficulty delivering stents and then trying to deliver to pull the stent back. There was not good coaxial position of the guide catheter with the stent, and uh, what happened is the stain the stent came off the balloon. So very similar to the previous location, but on the positive side, the stent was actually partially inside the guide catheter which facilitates the retrieval because what we did is advance a, another balloon next to the lost stand, inflate the balloon, and then pull everything back. And this is what came out. This is part of the deformed stand protruding back out from the tip of the guide catheter. And there was an inflated balloon inside the guide catheter. You can see here the whole system coming out all the way through the seat. Another option is to use a loop snare to retrieve a stand. There are different loop snares, small ones that can fit in the coronary arteries and larger ones that can fit into the aorta. This is an example of a gooseneck snare. If sometimes it can be advanced over the lost stand, then the snare is pulled against the retrieval catheter and then capturing the stand, everything is removed. This is an example of how snares work. There are two major types. There are three loop snares and the Amplatz gooseneck that has a single snare. You can actually make a snare if you don't have one by putting a wire through a diagnostic catheter and threading it all the way back, or by using a guide catheter extension. There is a separate video on how to do that. This is uh, an example of the Amplatz gooseneck snare, and this is how it works. The snare is pulled back, and then if it captures the lost stent or other equipment, then that will be trapped between the snare and the tip of a delivery catheter. So the steps are advance the snare against the lost object, then pull back, that brings the lost object next to the delivery catheter or a guide catheter, and then pull everything out. This is in action. We're pushing in the snare so that gets deployed. Then we advance the snare over the item to be retrieved, a wire in this case, it captures out, and then by holding pressure against the delivery catheter, we can now remove everything back out. And the same thing can be done with the three loop snares. This is an example of the end snare. It has three loops, so this increases the chance of capturing the lost material. Those two snares are larger ones, but they are smaller ones, such as the Micro Elite and the Micro, the Mini end snare two to four millimeters. Those can be actually placed inside the coronary artery if needed, although they do carry a small risk of causing dissections or other complications. Here's a case that was an RCA-CTO that was successfully treated and then we wanted to fix the middle AD lesion. The lesion was calcified, uh, we did not prepare it very well and then trying to pull the stand back, the stand came out in the left main so we have this situation now where the stand is partially in and partially out. But the stands can be very hard to see. And that is why actually intravascular imaging can be extremely useful. This is Ivus in the left main. We can see here is the lost stand that is uh, extending back all the way into the guide catheter. So we do have uh, the lost stand and intravascular imaging can help localize it. In this case, uh, what was used is an ensnare device that caught the stent and then the whole thing came out. And this is how it looks after it was retrieved. 
this is the ensnare and this is the capsule stand that has been elongated during the retrieval attempt. And then I was, after retrieval, confirms that we have actually removed the stand from the left main. So again, IVUS is an excellent tool for visualizing lost stands, which sometimes can be hard to see by fluoroscopy. And after standing, a nice result was achieved. Another way to retrieve stands is the so-called guide wire twirling technique. This assumes we have a wire through a stand. If not, multiple wires can be advanced, ideally through the stand stretch. Then they are rotated multiple times until there is twisting of the distal ends of the guide wires, and then both wires are pulled back, bringing the stand back into the guide catheter. So to summarize, stand loss is a complication that uh, can be prevented by doing very careful lesion preparation, ideally using guide catheters that are large, such as six, seven, or eight friends, and avoiding forceful advancement or forceful pulling back of the stands. If uh, stand loss occurs, the first question is whether retrieval is needed or not. In many cases, if the stent is in a non-significant location in the coronary artery, the simplest thing to do might be to just take a balloon and deploy the stent, or take another stent and crush it against the wall of the vessel. But if retrieval is desired or required, then there are three major techniques. One is the small balloon technique, then using a snare, or using multiple guide wires and twirling them to remove the stand. If all this fail and stand retrieval is still necessary, then emergency surgery might be required. Thank you very much.